What's up? My name is Nick Abstract, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to do convincing uh, mock-ups and kind of renderings for your potential mural projects that you're pitching. I guess I'll give a brief backstory before I get into the tutorial section. I'd like to say it's pretty difficult to get a mural job sometimes, especially if you've never painted a large-scale mural before. Going up to a client and saying, hey, I'm an artist, I'd love to paint your wall that you have here. Yes, that takes some guts and some gusto, but at the same time, if you don't have any previous work examples to show, the client's probably not going to be on board with, you know, paying you X amount of dollars to do a mural. So this is where mock-ups and renderings come into play. I have a background in graphic design, so I'm used to using programs like Photoshop and Illustrator. But if you've never used Photoshop or Illustrator before, I'm going to be walking you through literally every single step to do a convincing mock-up. So without further ado, I'll show you my website here, and then from there, we'll move into actually doing the tutorial. So this here is my website. I have different murals that I've painted, interior, exterior, as well as some other interesting art projects that I've done. Um, but in order to do your first mural, doing a mock-up or a rendering is very, very important. So before I ever had painted anything, if we scroll all the way back, I have a lot of renderings of potential projects. You know, th this is a potential project, but it's just a photo from the internet that I, I mocked up a design on and I thought, dang, you know, this architecture looks really cool and there's this big blank wall. It'd be great if there was a mural on it. So even though I'm not actually pitching a mural to Iceland here, I was still doing a mock-up to show what a, what a mural could look like on a massive, you know, eight or 10 story building because let's be honest, early in your career, no one's going to pay you to do an eight or nine story building. But if you get in the habit of doing a couple renderings and doing some mock-ups, you know, who knows, maybe a client will see something this big one day and all of a sudden you're doing a massive project. So that's how I've landed a few of my early, early projects um, just through doing a mock-up. And another thing with mock-ups too is not only is it helping convince a client to kind of go your direction. But once you have a client, you can then provide a mock-up as a service. So before you paint a mural, you can have all of the stakeholders and people on board, you know, look over the design and see what it would actually look like. So this is the strongest thing that I found to actually push clients over the edge into believing in you and signing off on your crazy ideas. So here's a few quick examples of, you know, this building was wanting a mural. So I reached out to them, did a few mock-ups, and this is also something you can charge a service for too, as an artist. You know, it can be tough being an artist and not landing jobs. If you do work for them, like a mock-up or something for free, then you essentially lose money on the effort. So before you paint a mural, you can also just charge your business. Hey, you know, if you want to at least see what I've got going on, you don't have to commit to a full mural yet, but I could at least do a mock-up to sort of test the water and see how you're feeling about it. So here's a few quick examples. Um, and then on my website here as well, um, got a few photos pulled up too. So these are all just mock-ups. This is not a real, not a real mural, but it is still very convincing. You know, you've got the brick texture on there. You've got the highlights and the low lights of the building. And these are all things that end up selling the product in the end. So, I mean, even down here on this little garage door section, you have all these grates and lines and all of that shadows and highlights is very convincing. So yes, a lot of muralists will sometimes just throw a design on there and, you know, not do the texture work, but I feel like the texture stuff is what really seals the deal for, for different jobs I've had where it's like, look, this is exactly what it will look like a hundred percent. It'll have this texture in there when it's finally painted. So, um, so that's an example. Here's a few others. Uh, this one I thought was a pretty good utilization of using kind of windows in the mock-up. So you can see there's a big gutter here in the middle, how shapes would overlap this because with murals, let's face it, sometimes there's big obstacles. There's a telephone pole, there's a drainage pipe, there's, you know, all kinds of different stuff that, you know, utility boxes and things of that nature. So being able to integrate those into the mock-up and also think about that before you actually do a design on a wall is to kind of look at these obstacles and anticipate these challenges before you're in the field actually doing it. Um, so yeah, that's another example. Here's a few others. So I'll reiterate again, these are not painted. These are literally just photographs that I took or that I've taken from the internet and mocked my artwork up on. 
So they're not, no, no paint has hit the wall. It's just completely digital here. And, you know, sometimes you could swing for the fences. These three buildings here are known as the pyramids in uh, northern Indiana or northern Indianapolis. And so these are buildings that architecturally I've really been a fan of. And I've always thought a mural on them would look really, really cool. Yes, I don't know how to paint a mural to that scale, but, you know, you, you can play around and, and, and you can have fun with these anyway. So regardless of what your skill set and current abilities are, don't be afraid to shoot for the stars and, and try to do some crazy, crazy massive stuff. Because you never know, you might end up doing a project that big. So here's a few other examples of massive, massive buildings that honestly, I'd probably, I'd be scratching my head knowing how to paint them, but it's worth a shot. And it's, it's good practice nonetheless to try to balance with, you know, balance artwork with weird architecture and weird windows and, you know, how a design interplays with that. So this is the last mock-up I'll show before we get into sort of the tutorial section. Um, I, I took a photograph here from Instagram. I follow all kinds of different architecture blogs, forums, and I love just collecting and diverging into all kinds of architectural movements. So here's an image posted by Dek Mikal um, of the Alton Estate. I don't know where this building is. I, I guess I could do more research, but nonetheless, I thought, you know, this is a perfect mural to show how this mock-up process works. So we're going to take this photograph and we're going to mock up an entire mural on this whole face here. So once you download the image online, open up Adobe Photoshop. Yeah, here's a few I was working on today. All right. So basically, you're going to take that photograph and just drag it and drop it into, into Photoshop. You can also go to File Open and put it in Photoshop. But nonetheless, this is kind of, kind of my preferred route. So right off the bat, this tutorial is not that, not that intense. It's pretty simple. And once you get the steps down, you could bang a mock out out in maybe five or 10 minutes. They're, they're very, very fast. So if you take an image online like this, odds are you're going to have to crop it. So if you go over here to the crop tool, you tap on that. And now it's as easy as you can just move these little, these little levers down. Um, so I just kind of crop some of the Instagram information out of there. Same on the bottom. And then when you have your crop ready set, you can just hit enter. And another pro tip when you're in, in Photoshop or Illustrator and just any software programs that enable Zoom, I'll just hold alt. Um, so if you hold alt on your keyboard and then scroll in, it'll let you zoom in and zoom out. So that's a quick and easy way to zoom without having to literally hit the magnifying glass over here and tap in. You can just like hold alt and zoom in and out with reckless abandon. Um, and then another thing that I use when I am zooming, if I zoom, but I'm, I'm too far over, if you hit the space bar, you can then click and drag the image around. So the quickest way to move through Illustrator and Photoshop is through alt and in the space bar to just move stuff around. So that is a godsend. I use those tools all the time throughout design. And I know for some of you, that's very basic stuff, but you know, I figured I would say it nonetheless. So the first step is once you can kind of see your whole image here, we'll go, we'll open up our layers palette. Photoshop should have your layers palette open, but in the event that it's not open, go up to windows and then scroll down and hit layers and it should open your layers palette. Pretty much everything we're going to do today is within the layers palette here. So Step number one, we're going to just duplicate this, the image that we have here into another layer. And the only reason we're going to do this is because as we progress through the mock-up, it'll be good to like reference back on what the original image looks like. So to duplicate the image, you can either right click, go to duplicate layer, or you can hit control J or for Mac people, it'd be command J. So that just literally duplicated the image right on top of the other, the other image. Um, another quick tidbit too, I am using the move tool to just kind of move stuff around. And with move tool, it's really great. If you have auto select enabled up here, you can just click and drag stuff around whenever you need. Um, and keyboard shortcut for the move tool is press V. So if you press V as in Victor on your keyboard, you can just grab stuff and move it. Anywho, we've duplicated our layer. Um, and so now the first step is going to basically be cutting our shape out of this image here. So what I like to use is the pin tool. You can press P on your keyboard to access the pin tool. 
and we're gonna use Alt and zoom on in and just kind of decide where we want this mural to go. Um, I think I'm gonna include this bottom portion just because it's at the same angle as the rest. So really here, we're just gonna be clicking, moving our pin, pin tool over, clicking again. This is a little bit particular. It doesn't have to be fully exact, but basically we're going to be tracing the outline of the wall that we have right now. Um, and it's okay too. Instagram photos that you screenshot aren't of the highest quality, which is, you know, understandable. That's okay. But with the mock-up, it doesn't have to be flawless quality. It'll just, it'll look all right nonetheless. And we're just basically going to be clicking and tracing along our building shape up here. All right. Last, last few lines here. Boom. Okay. So I don't know if you can see on the screen too well, but we basically have the whole, the whole building face here selected. So the next thing you're going to do with your pin tool is right click and go make selection. And then with these settings, I basically just use what it already comes as stock here for the selection menu and just hit okay, or you can also hit enter. Now, once your selection is made, what this means is these little crawling ants is what they've been kind of nicknamed. They look like crawling ants around the line you just made. This just means that this area is now selected. So if you take the move tool and you grab it, it's gonna be moving that section around that you just selected. Um, but we wanna take this selection and make it into a new layer. So a very quick and easy way to do that is to just copy and then paste your selection. So we're gonna hit Command C for copy, and then keep an eye over here in our layers panel. Now we're gonna hit Command V for paste. So boom, we've now just pasted, we've pasted our, our wall face right here. Um, super quick, super easy. So that's an essential step. And I'm, I'm hiding and unhiding these layers here just so that you can see that, for instance. I use these eyeball things all the time just to cross-reference how stuff looks. So, okay. That is probably the hardest part of the process. The rest is fairly, fairly easy. So once you've got your selection, you've got your, your layer here. Um, what we're gonna basically do is um, duplicate the layer again. Actually, no, 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 sorry. Command Z, that, that means undo. We're gonna do Command Z. The next step, we are going to put a new layer. And when you add a new layer, it's not going to paste anything over anything yet. It's just a new blank layer. So with this new blank layer, nothing's in there. We are going to go over here and tap this black or white square section. And that just makes these default to black and white. So if we've got some funky colors in here and you're like, eh, I just want black and white for this use case, tap that button right there. So next we're gonna go to the paint bucket. And you can either do black or white. This part doesn't actually matter. I'll just do black because it's easier to see for this experiment. And with the paint bucket selected, you're just going to tap the button one time. So that fills the entire screen with black. Um, the next step that we're going to do, we're going to make um, we're going to make our selection here of the building a clipping mask using this black box. And if you've never heard of what clipping mask means, basically you take a layer above and mask it to a shape underneath it. That's basically what we're going to do. So a quick keyboard shortcut to do this is control alt G. And so as you can see, um, that, that created a mask here of our shape. Another way you can do that, I believe, yeah, you can just right click and go to clipping mask. Where is it? Shoot, I don't know. I, oh, there it is, create clipping mask, there we go. So I use Alt-Command-G, it's a little bit easier. And once you have those keyboard shortcuts in your head, it's, it's quick and easy to use. So the next step is basically we are setting up a framework of the highlights and shadows of the brick wall. So to do that, this is why this black section is important because now that we filled the area with black, we're gonna go down and select color. And so as you can see, that basically just made our selection void of any color. And the reason this is important is as we apply our highlights and lowlights, we don't want it to be carrying over any of the hues or any of the color from the previous wall. We just want it purely shadow, purely highlights, okay? So um, 
Actually, we should have duplicated the shape. Sorry. We'll duplicate that. My bad. So now that we've got our selection black and white here, we're going to group these two layers together by highlighting them. You can hold shift and click on the other one. We're going to right click and go to merge layers. And as you can see, that basically just merged those layers into one. So now if I click it and move it around, our grayscale wall now is one, one shape. So the next step, you duplicate that. So you have two of those. So as you can see, boom, we've got two gray wall sections, all right? So I'm going to hide the top one, and we're going to work on the bottom. So the bottom shape I typically use as the shadow section. So we're going to go up here and go to Image, Adjustments, Levels. And what Levels lets you do is just play around with highlights, midtones, and shadows of the shapes. This dialog box looks a little confusing, but just from playing around with it, you can see how it affects um, it, how it affects the image. So if you move the darks in, things get darker. If you move the lights in, things get lighter. So our goal with the bottom grayscale shape is to make the image as white as possible, but also have a few shapes included with the shadows. I don't know if that makes exact sense, but basically we're going to add a bunch of white to it to where we start to see, okay, we, we have got a lot of brick lines here and a lot of grout lines. So make it pretty, pretty bright and then bring in your shadows. So you're going to get a very kind of ugly, grimy looking image, but this is what builds that texture of your image. So just kind of dance around with some of these until you have nice shadows in, you know, we've got this shadow section down here on the left. We've also got some of this dark texture up here from kind of weather or aging. So this for your shadow section is going to look great. You want it primarily very white with just your shadows very pertinent. So from this step, we're going to hit OK. And we're going to set this layer blend mode to multiply. And after that, as you can see, it's making the image look kind of weird and strange, but that's fine. Now we're going to unhide that. We're going to hide this layer and turn it off. So now we're back to our original image. Toggle on our grayscale layer down here. Okay. So now we're working on the, the layer above it. We're going to do the same process. Go up to image, adjustments, levels. But now we want our image to be as dark as possible. And I know this is a little counterintuitive, but for your highlights, you want the image very dark so that any light that's popping off is highlighted in the white section. So we're gonna make it really, really dark. I'm talking like that dark. Bring in the highlights a little bit. And you don't wanna do it to the point where it starts to get crunchy like that. Like, I don't know if you can see that. That's not, that's not what we want. But we want enough to where um, it's not crunched and pixelated, but it picks up some of the, the highlights in our bricks. So once again, we'll make it really, really dark. Start to bring in some highlights. Yeah, something, something kind of in that range. I know it looks kind of gross, kind of crazy, but that's fine. And we're going to set this blending mode of this layer to screen. So now that we have these two layers, you're not going to really be able to see either of them over top of one another yet, but that's fine. Turn these layers on, but turn their opacity all the way down to zero, okay? All the way down to zero. So the next part we're going to add, we're going to put our design in. So in theory, you could, you know, make a new image and do your whole mural design within that. But what I tend to do is I use Adobe Illustrator because a lot of my work is very geometric and very angular. So we're gonna swing over to Illustrator now. I've got a few mural designs from a previous client job I did here. Um, these were selections that weren't picked for the mural, but I feel like they fit the scale of our wall pretty well. So, um, you know, as we can see, the wall is very, very vertical, similar to this mural design, but this one's a little too, a little too vertical. So I'm just gonna, just for this use case, drag and kind of stretch it sort of here. And then we'll take their little company logo and kind of put it in that area. So from this point, the cool thing about Illustrator and Photoshop is they do play well together. So with the selection tool here, same like Photoshop, if you press V, that brings you to your auto select tool. 
So we're going to click and drag over our design and it can be any design you want and then just let go. So as you can see, we've got our whole design selected. And from there, it's literally as easy as just copy. So command C, go over to Photoshop now and hit um, command V. And it's going to ask you how you want your selection. Because it's coming from Illustrator, it doesn't know if you want to keep it an Illustrator file or make it pixels. I typically just choose pixels. Um, and it's just going to paste your design in there really huge. That's fine. Hit enter. So sometimes your, your layer selection may have been pasted on top of everything else. That's fine. So our next step, we're going to drag it down. So just basically click this layer with your artwork in it and drag it on top of um, on top of the bare wall shape. So I'll start naming these just so that it so that it helps. We've got background layer, uh, source image here. Whoa, whoops. Art. And then this is shadows. And this is highlights. So keep in mind, these two layers above are still on zero opacity. So we can't see them. That's fine. That'll come in later. So from this point, uh, we're going to make our artwork into a clipping mask of our bare wall shape. So as long as your artwork is directly above the bare wall shape, we're going to hit Control Alt G. So once again, Control Alt G makes a clipping mask. You can also right click and go to create clipping mask. So Alt Command or Control Alt G, boom. So now, okay, cool. Now we're getting somewhere. The artwork is basically starting to mold to the shape of the building, which is perfect. That's, that's exactly what we want. But as you can see, this wall is not perfectly flat. It's kind of it's kind of cockeyed at the top. And so we need our artwork to actually match that same perspective. And thankfully, Photoshop has already thought through this problem. We're going to use what's called the transform function. And what's great about this is if you just simply put control T or command T, this brings up the outline of your artwork. Okay. So the artwork that we pasted in here now, you know, if we take the clipping mask off, you see this is the shape it is. Once the clipping mask is put in, we've, if you do command T, you can then see your artwork is back behind your clipping mask. So we need to more closely align these. And you can do that by simply grabbing the corners and moving them in. So we want to just get it as close to the wall structure as we can, scale wise. And I typically get it to, I keep it rectangular up until I can't. So at this point, the shape is dang near pretty close. I feel like the bottom right corner and bottom left are uh, pretty near their final final place. So from there, just to fully refine it, we're going to right click, hit perspective. And then now this is pretty cool. You can just simply drag. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. We're going to right click and go to distort, not perspective. So distort lets you control each axis of the image yourself. So you can now click and drag this literally wherever you want. And the reason this helps is it, it makes rectangular images fit these goofy kind of perspectives. So we're just going to drag this one here, drag this one over in this range. Same with this one here. And then this one's the one that's really going to help. So boom, now our artwork is very, very confined to the shape of the building now. So you, you just hit enter once you have your selection and then boom. So now we're very close, very, very close to having it completely done. The artwork is scaled to the building. Its proportions are correct. That's great. The next step is where the, the mock-up really takes, you know, really becomes real. <laughs> that sounds so stupid, but yes, it becomes more realistic. So if we click on our shadows layer here that we have on zero opacity, this is where we're going to refine how much shadows and highlights we want to be shown. So simply make sure your shadow layers on multiply like we did earlier, and we're going to, we're going to slowly turn the opacity up. Um, so boom, by turning the opacity up, now we get those brick layers and those, those, those mortar lines that we wanted from before. And really, we're going to be, you don't want the multiply layer at 100 because it looks like dog turd. <laughs> it looks like that and does not look good. So I always start all the way at zero and start to kind of turn the shadows on until it looks like it probably would if it was in real life. So we've got a shadow section up here as well as the shadows back down below. Um, 
you, you kind of just want to adjust this so that all the colors on the mural are being affected by the shadow just a little bit. Um, and with this rule, less is, less is more. So, you know, let, let's put it at about 18%. Um, and then now we're going to click on the highlights layer. And the highlights, you're not really going to see the highlights down here because these lighter sections exist. But where the highlights really pop off is up in the darker areas. So you'll see as we take some of these highlights up, boom. Let's put highlights around maybe 12. And so just like that, that's a freaking mural, dude. <laughs> that looks looks pretty dang cool. A few minutes in Photoshop and Illustrator and... You know, you've got yourself a very, very convincing mock-up. Um, this is a huge selling point for getting a lot of murals. I would say most of my murals early on were just showing mock-ups and showing examples of what I could do because it's kind of like the old saying goes, like, no one's going to pay you to fix their car if they don't know if you can even fix a car in the first place. Like, if you have no work examples to show, which I understand, it, it's hard. It's hard to land a mural job and have someone trust you and pay you to do some some big artwork, especially doing stuff that's not very conventional. People are going to be hard pressed to agree to, you know, that that's a big risk for a client to, to take on that. So anything you can do to help push the needle and, and, you know, get your artwork, um, get your artwork in a place where it looks as close to final as possible. It's an easier yes for people because for a lot of clients, I found it's difficult for them to picture in their head. Okay. I see some work examples of stuff you've done, but you know, what are you going to do for our wall? Like, how does that make sense? So typically when engaging in a client now, I can say, look, the first stage of doing a mural is actually doing the mock-up portion. So I charge X amount of dollars to do a mock-up. And that includes the whole design, iterating, um, diverging and converging on inspiration and coming up with the whole design and a mock-up and a render. So, you know, I've had some jobs where I don't even end up painting the wall, but at least I got some money out of doing a really good mock-up. And they also have that mock-up in their, in their email inbox for years to come. So you never know that that image may stay as their, their desktop background, if they think it's cool, or it might just float in their email and three years down the road, they'll say, Hey, remember this cool mock-up that this artist did? Let's reach back out and see if they'll, you know, paint a mural. So um, I think that's, that's kind of going to wrap it up. Um, I guess I'll go through very, very quickly, just toggle through all of our layers to show how this, this layer sequencing worked. So you've got your source image. That's great. You duplicate the source image just so that we can see sort of a before and after. Um, then you've got your bare wall shape. Once again, bare wall shape is literally just the shape of where the mural will go. Next, you've got your artwork. And your artwork is a clipping mask onto your bare wall shape. And layered on top of those is our bare wall shape that we duplicated and adjust the image layers, or sorry, we adjusted the image uh, levels and just kind of messed with this until we got just the shadows. And the same thing for the highlights, we got just the highlights. So boom, right there, we can see a before and after of how this looks. I think it looks pretty cool. I think it's pretty believable. And the good thing is if you go to 100% resolution, I mean, it looks freaking crisp. It looks very sharp, very clean. There's texture in the brick. There's highlights. I mean, shoot. Um, where this process gets a little difficult is if you had like, let's say, you know, a little tree bluff or something like this that overlapped over the mural, you know, if the tree kind of covers part of it, there's a way to do a mock-up where it looks real even with trees. It's it's difficult, but it is possible. I think I may have an example here. Yeah, so this one has an example. It's not the most realistic, but you can see the shapes kind of go back behind the tree bluff here. Um, that was not it was not easy to do necessarily, but there are ways to do it. So if you watch this video and you you would like to hear more about kind of doing mock-ups in that vein where there's a lot of windows, uh, kind of like in this example here. I can walk you through that tutorial as well. Same with this one. There's tons of windows on that. So um, anywho, that pretty much wraps it up. I am Nick Abstract. And yeah, let me know if this tutorial was useful. Please share around to different people who you think could use this information. I've definitely benefited from 
you know, coming up with some of this tutorial process and refining it to a point where, I mean, I can cook out mock-ups really, really fast. And I have, I kind of have fun doing them now that I've done them a bit. So definitely reach out. Let me know what you think. If you have any tips or things that I could also benefit from in my process, you know, we can always grow and we can always improve. So feel free to uh, reach out. My website's Nick Abstract and you can follow me on Instagram and all the socials, Nick Abstract as well. Um, and hey, also, as you do your tutorial or as you do this tutorial and make mock-ups of your own, please send them to me. I would be thrilled to just see a few examples of, you know, mock-ups on buildings near you. You could just take a picture of a building, go home and do a mock-up of it. So if you do this tutorial and you had fun and you're, you're proud of what you come up with, please send it to me. I, I would love to see them and I'd love to connect with more artists. So uh, that's going to, that's going to wrap it up. Hope you guys have a good day. Uh, Nick Abstract signing out.